We all know the biblical myth about Adam and Eve, the story that tells of our creation and the relationship between God and humanity. But what if there was another woman before Eve, one called Lilith? Who was she? And what symbolism hides behind her story? We'll try to find out together in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome! According to Abrahamic religions, God created Adam, the first human, out of clay and breathed life into him. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of a man. But isn't it weird and illogical that God created all living beings in pairs, a female and male, but only Adam was created alone? Deep within the history of Jewish mythology lies a tale of a figure who defined the conventions of her time and embraced her own desires and independence. Her name is Lilith, Adam's first wife. From demonist to feminist icon, Lilith has undergone a myriad of interpretations and adaptations, making her one of the most enigmatic and intriguing figures in folklore. Who was she? And how did she gain her notoriety? In Jewish folklore, it is believed that Lilith was Adam's initial spouse. Although the Torah, the compilation of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, does not mention her, over time she has been linked to Adam as a way of reconciling the different accounts of the creation story found in the book of Genesis. After parting from Adam, Lilith is portrayed as a demon or spirit who preys on children, women in childbirth, and men who venture out alone at night. She is also associated with desire, independence, and rebellion against male authority. But was she really a demon, or is there more to her story that remains hidden from us? What was the origin of the Lilith myth, and how has it evolved over time? Lilith's origin remains uncertain among scholars, although some suggest that she may have been influenced by Sumerian legends about female vampires. The myth of Lilith has its roots in ancient Mesopotamian and Babylonian cultures, where she was believed to be a demon or spirit associated with storms and wind. In Sumerian mythology, she was called Lilithu a type of demon that preyed on babies and pregnant women. In this tradition, Lilith is described as a winged creature with a female form and is associated with the concept of uncleanliness and impurity. She is often used as a cautionary tale to warn against the dangers of disobedience and rebellion. But in Babylonian mythology, Lilith is also associated with the goddess Ishtar and is believed to have been a handmaiden to her. She is also associated with the idea of sexual desire and fertility. However, the most well-known version of the Lilith story can be found in the Jewish tradition. While Lilith is mentioned four times in the Babylonian Talmud, it wasn't until the alphabet Ben Sira, a medieval text from the 9th or 10th century, that she became associated with the initial version of the creation story. The alphabet of Ben Sira describes Lilith as Adam's first wife and provides a comprehensive account of her story. According to this story, Lilith was created by God from Earth's dust just like Adam and she believed that both of them should be treated the same manner. Although Lilith was supposed to live in the Garden of Eden with Adam, she was strong and independent and thought of herself as Adam's equal since she was created in the same way he was. Lilith responded, We are equal to each other in as much as we are both created from the earth. But they would not listen to one another. When Lilith saw this, she pronounced the ineffable name and flew away into the air. 
So, after leaving Adam, Lilith fled to the Red Sea where she mated with demons and gave birth to hundreds of demon offspring. Adam stood in prayer before his creator, sovereign of the universe. He said, the woman you gave me has run away. At once the Holy One, blessed be he, sent these three angels to bring her back. If she agrees to come back, fine. If not, she must permit 100 of her children to die every day. The angels left God and pursued Lilith, whom they overtook in the midst of the sea, in the mighty waters, wherein the Egyptians were destined to drown. They told her God's word, but she did not wish to return. The angels said, We shall drown you in the sea. Leave me, she said. I was created only to call sickness to infants. If the infant is male, I have dominion over him for eight days after his birth and if female for twenty days. When the angels heard Lilith's words, they insisted she go back. But she swore to them by the name of the living and eternal God, whenever I see you or your names or your forms in an amulet, I will have no power over that infant. She also agreed to have 100 of her children die every day. Accordingly, every day 100 demons perish and for the same reason Jewish people write the angels' names on the amulets of young children. When Lilith sees their names, she remembers her oath and the child recovers. Being left alone and unable to accept Lilith's refusal, Adam called upon God to create another mate for him, which resulted in the creation of Eve from Adam's rib, the story that we already know. According to some versions of the story, Lilith was jealous of Adam and Eve because they lived in peace and happiness in the Garden of Eden. Plotting to take revenge on the pair, she transformed her into a serpent and returned to the garden, where she convinced Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, which resulted in Adam and Eve having to leave the paradise. As a result of her rebellion, Lilith became a figure of fear and and male violence in Jewish folklore associated with witchcraft, seduction and death. Can we find similar stories about Lilith in other cultures and religious traditions? Lilith is not mentioned directly in the Bible, but some Christian writers have referenced her as a symbol of temptation and sin. In Islamic tradition, Lilith is believed to be the mother of jinn or supernatural creatures. In some images and art, Lilith is portrayed standing on the back of two lions, which she seemed to bend according to her will. Throughout history, she was being depicted in many works of art as well as on plaques and reliefs, especially in Babylon, where she was said to have originated. On some reliefs, she's portrayed with the upper body of a woman and the tail of a serpent instead of a lower body, much like Echinda in Greek mythology. In the 19th and 20th century, Lilith was rediscovered by feminist writers and scholars who saw her as a symbol of female empowerment and rebellion. In this context, she came to represent the struggle for women's rights and the rejection of patriarchal authority. Could we find more about Lilith in the meaning of her name? The exact origin of the name Lilith is uncertain and debated among scholars. Some believe that the name may have originated from the Sumerian word Lilithu, which referred to a type of female demon or vampire. Another possibility is that the name Lilith is derived from the Akkadian word Lilu, which means wind, spirit or ghost. This would connect Lilith to a broader mythological tradition of female spirits and demons that were believed to inhabit the world of the dead. Others suggest that the name may have come from the Hebrew word Lil, which means night, and thus Lilith could be translated as night creature or creature of the night. So, regardless of its exact origin, the name Lilith has come to be associated with a powerful and mysterious figure who embodies both the allure and the danger of the night and the unknown. As a dark shadow figure, Lilith has often been associated with animals like owls, snakes and other nocturnal creatures. But how do they contribute to her symbolic significance? 
Firstly, these animals are often associated with darkness, mystery, and the unknown, which are all qualities that are attributed to Lilith. In many cultures, owls are seen as symbols of wisdom and knowledge, while snakes are often associated with transformation and rebirth. By associating Lilith with these animals, her symbolic significance is enhanced as she becomes a representation of feminine wisdom, intuition, hidden knowledge, transformation, and rebirth. But Lilith's connection to the archetypal figure of the serpent can point to another association. As we know from the Bible, the serpent can represent temptation and sin as well as sexuality. Similarly, Lilith can represent the power of the feminine and the desire for autonomy and independence. By linking Lilith with animals that are free, untamed, and unbound by human conventions, her symbolic significance is heightened as she becomes a representation of the untamed, wild aspects of human psyche that are often repressed and denied. But let's go back to ancient Sumeria, their creation myth, also known as the Eridu Genesis and the Anunnaki. The ancient civilization of the Sumerians believed in pantheon of gods, the Anunnaki, who were also known as the ones who came from the sky. In most esoteric versions of the Sumerian creation myth, the Anunnaki came to earth to mine gold and then created humans to perform the task. The creation of humans happened by genetically engineering the human race using their own DNA. Enki, the god of water, knowledge and creation together with his counterpart, sister Ninhurzak, mixed their own DNA with that of a Homo erectus to create a man and a woman in their image. Initially, humans were not allowed to reproduce as the populations needed to be controlled. However, after seeing how his own creation was exploited as slaves by his brother Enlil, who was the chief god of the Sumerian pantheon, Enki decided to teach humans how to mate. According to the Terra papers by Robert Morning Sky, initially there was equality between the male and the female counterparts and women were equal to men. However, at one point, Marduk, the son of god Enki, rebelled against the prime god Enlil and overthrew him. After establishing his rule over Earth, the Terra papers explained that Marduk, in order to solidify his power, removed the feminine element and rewrote history in a way that gave power only to the male part. Well, Lilith and Adam were equal, suggesting an initial parody between the masculine and feminine aspect. But then something changes. Lilith is demonized. And when Eve appears, she, being created from Adam, is already subordinate to him since her creation. Doesn't this replacement and the following story sound convenient for a male dominant world? What if we look beyond the literal interpretation of the myth of Lilith? As a symbol of an overlooked and ignored feminine aspect, is it possible that throughout time people have used the image of Lilith to demonize the shadow part of themselves, the one they cannot face and prefer to hide? And so in a way can Lilith point to aspects in ourselves that we tend to run away from? The myth of Lilith as a creature of the night has been interpreted throughout the lens of psychology, particularly in the field of Jungian psychology. According to this view, Lilith represents the archetype of dark feminine or the shadow aspect of the psyche, the soul. What is the psyche? The word psyche originally means soul or spirit, but in the psychology of Carl Jung, the Swiss psychologist and founder of analytical psychology, one's psyche can be seen as their total personality and encompasses all one's thoughts, behaviors, feelings and emotions. Or as he says, the totality of all psychic processes, conscious as well as unconscious. Carl Jung was interested in the symbolism of Lilith and her relevance to the human psyche. Jung saw Lilith as a potent symbol of the unconscious or a representation of the anima, which is the feminine aspect of the male psyche. So how does the myth of Lilith relate to the integration of unconscious aspects of ourselves? Jung believed that psychotherapy should help people bring their unconscious thoughts and experiences into their conscious awareness, leading to a better self-understanding and more fulfilling life. For this, he said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. 
This quote suggests that our unconscious thoughts, feelings and desires have a significant impact on our lives even if we are not aware of them. Until we become aware and acknowledge these unconscious influences, we will continue to be driven by them and we may even mistake their impact on our lives for fate or destiny beyond our control. Furthermore, the story of Lilith can also be seen as a metaphor for the process of individuation or the development of a fully integrated and authentic sense of self. By refusing to be subjugated by Adam or any other external authority, Lilith represents the power of the individual to assert their own unique identity and autonomy. In that way, in psychoanalysis, the story of Lilith represents the power of the unconscious to challenge and transform the conscious self and has inspired many to explore the depths of their own psyches in search for greater self-awareness and integration. So who was Lilith so inconvenient to and what would have happened if Lilith remained with Adam? If she'd stayed, we might have seen a more equal partnership between men and women and most importantly between the masculine and feminine principle of creation. Because everything in nature has both sides, yin and yang, and when the balance is tilted, things inevitably will go in the wrong way. Could the great flood be prevented then? If Lilith's story has been altered to fit the needs of those who rule, how about the alternation of all human history throughout time? Do the historical accounts accurately and objectively present what really happened back in time? What would our world look like if we knew the real truth? We know that throughout history various groups and individuals have sought to control or manipulate narratives for their own purposes, such as maintaining power or promoting a specific ideology. And one clear example is the New Testament of the Bible in which only four strictly chosen Gospels are included while all the Gnostic Gospels which tell about the real teachings of Jesus have been omitted and classified as heresy. Lilith's story can be seen as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unequal power, dynamics and the importance of mutual respect, balance and consent, but also it shows us that we should not trust anything blindly. Rather, we should always think critically, approach historical accounts with critical eye and understand the context in which they were written. This includes examining multiple sources, considering different perspectives and being aware of potential biases and falsifications. It also calls to embrace the full spectrum of human experience, including the parts of ourselves and others that are often suppressed or denied. Lilith's mythology can teach us a great deal about human psyche and our relationship with the unknown. Her story can be seen as a warning against denying or repressing the aspects of ourselves, as doing so can lead to feelings of anger, resentment and rebellion. Instead, Lilith's myth encourages us to embrace the full range of our emotions and desires, even those that are considered taboo or unconventional. Lilith's association with the night, darkness and the unknown can be seen as a reminder that there is always more to ourselves and the world around us than we can see or understand. If we acknowledge the mystery and complexity of life, we can open ourselves up to new possibilities and experiences rather than living in fear or ignorance. We bow before you and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open and until we meet again.